Legend of Korra, a licensed character action game developed by Platinum Games and published by Activision for every platform ever made, is based on the sequel series to Avatar The Last Airbender. You play as Korra, the current Avatar, who is basically the global missionary policing the world's outlaws and feral spirits. With the help of her goofy pals, you must defeat a mysterious man who plans to steal Korra's soul and return to the world of the living. All things considered, the story is minuscule at best. Most of the narrative is dumped on you through voiceovers during combat or during various three-second cutscenes sprinkled throughout the eight chapters of the game, each chapter of which being somewhere between 20 and 50 minutes long, unless you suck like I do. The gameplay basically consists of two main sections, the primary of which being fighting with various combo systems through clusters of enemies, mini-bosses, and occasionally bigger bosses while traversing the level for collectibles though the majority of your bending and combo opportunities are sort of locked off till specific sections of the story mode, at least your first time through. There is also a secondary gameplay section that occurs about three times in the game, and it, uh, it's Temple Run. It's literally Temple Run. Uh, I, I guess speaking as a person who's not particularly a big fan of Temple Run, it controls well, I guess. And at the very least, I'll say that it gets a bit more interesting in later sections of the game when you have your bending abilities and you have additional opportunities to do things like blasting through barriers, shielding yourself, and even giving yourself a double jump. There is actually another section of the game, but it's locked off until you've completed the story mode once for some reason. It's called Pro Bending, and if you have any knowledge of the show, it basically works the exact same way. Six people start on a field with a team of three, both of which starting on the center zone. Your goal specifically being to try and push back all three members of the opposing team back one zone so your entire team can move forward one zone. If any teammate on either side are pushed through all three zones, they are actually out of the match entirely. And if you get pushed back a zone, you can still advance with the rest of your team if you manage to push back all three members of the opposing team one zone. In total, the game's story mode on normal took me about 3 hours and 45 minutes to beat. Though, depending on your ability with character action titles, you can probably get through it significantly quicker, especially if you play on easy. Though it should be noted, Platinum Games themselves have openly encouraged people who are looking for a more difficult experience to play through Pro Bending Mode, along with the Extreme Difficulty in Story Mode, which you can't play until you've gone through the Story Mode once anyway, which gives you all your abilities at the beginning and changes enemy patterns, along with enemy variation and item placement. Presentation-wise, there's not a lot to say. The game has a cell-shaded graphics style that's not particularly interested in realism. All the modeling and texture work looks fine. Not fantastic, but not horrible either. Outside of one specifically disgusting rock texture in level 3. Eww. So with all that said, you might be wondering if I have anything good to say about this title. And for the most part, yes, I do. First off, the game runs at a solid 60 FPS, a gameplay standard for Platinum Games. Switching between the various bending styles is very satisfying, it allows you to open up your abilities more, and use whatever arsenal you prefer as far as movesets. And the final boss feels very, very satisfying, because it feels like the entire game was built around incorporating everything you'll need to defeat him specifically. As far as I can see it, there are three main factors that will affect how anyone can enjoy this game. One, the fact that it's a character action game. Two, the fact that it's a licensed game, published by Activision. And three, its price point. So to answer these concerns in the same order, one, if you have any previous negative experience with Platinum's past work like Okami, God Hand, Devil May Cry, Metal Gear Rising, you probably won't enjoy this game. I would say its normal mode is a bit easier than the average of those other titles, but not by much. If you don't like it, then you probably won't like this. Two, I'll admit I've been following this game for a while, and it's practically designed for me to buy it considering my admiration for Platinum and fondness for The Legend of Korra TV show. But I've spoken with people about this sort of situation before, and obviously licensed games rarely, if ever, get the time and money they deserve. But, depending on your investment in the original property and the price point, I believe adjusted expectations can lead to an enjoyable experience. So, that kind of rolls me into three. 
the price point. Now, this is the specific issue that I'm probably going to end up arguing with people till I'm blue in the face. For a lot of people, $15 is probably an impossibly huge amount to spend for a game that's only about two to four hours long, with only additional time coming from the pro bending mode and replaying the game on harder difficulties. But honestly, if you have any sort of inkling for it, $15 I sort of think is the perfect price point to try it out and see if you like it. Look, call me a fanboy. Call me an idiot. Call me whatever. I wasn't expecting the world from this title anyway, considering Platinum's constantly been talking about trying to get more work into the studio while still working on the games they want. Small and simple was the plan from the get-go with Legend of Korra, and I'm perfectly fine with that. And with far bigger titles being released beforehand and directly afterwards with Bayonetta 2, even from Platinum Studios themselves, I just sort of wanted to give a little time to this simple little game that a lot of people probably worked very hard on. So if you got the money, check it out. Feel free to leave some feedback about the review or your own opinion about the game. I'd love to hear it. I'll see you all next time.